Police sniffer dogs were searching through the charred remains of a Johannesburg apartment block on Friday. As authorities stepped up investigations into the cause of a devastating fire that claimed the lives of more than 70 people. The rundown five-story building was engulfed in flames in the early hours of Thursday in one of South Africa's worst disasters in recent memory. The majority of the victims were burned beyond recognition. Tembele Tumbashaza from Gauteng Province's Forensic Pathology Services said only 12 of the 74 bodies recovered so far were identifiable by sight. DNA samples from friends and relatives will be needed to identify the remaining victims. Wambali Kawunda managed to escape the blaze but lost his brother and niece. A lot of people have died and one of the deceased is my young brother. Some of us survived because we lived on the first floor and the fire didn't reach our apartment. But the apartment next door was burned. That is what happened. Household fires are common in Johannesburg, particularly in poor areas. The fire has highlighted a housing crisis in one of the world's most unequal cities. A provincial official has suggested some of those killed may have been renting from or were victims of extortion by criminal gangs in the so-called hijacked buildings syndicates. Lauren Landau, a professor at Wits University. And that building is, is so symbolic in that sense as, as some uh, building that where they issued passes to non-white populations to come and work in, in the city. People who were necessary to the economy, but who the uh, uh, sort of powers that be didn't really want living amongst them. And, and we see this sort of transformation and there's a sort of historical resonance because it's now was filled, at least it was filled yesterday, it seems with people from outside the borders, many of whom cannot get passes, but who also are critical to how the city works, to how the country works. President Cyril Ramaphosa described the fire as a great tragedy and a wake-up call for South Africa to confront its inner-city housing crisis.